along some disco lights this week just for a little bit of atmosphere hope that's okay welcome to easy like a sunday story thanks for tuning in i hope you've all had a great week and been enjoying this beautiful um, weather that we've been having including snow sleep slush rain quite a lot of rain and freezing cold temperatures i've really enjoyed it so hope you have too Hope you're nice and cosy now with a cup of tea and ready to tune in to this week's story. This week's story is called Sugarcoating It and it was actually created from a prompt from Marion Keys, an excellent author who's been putting out some prompts and coaching on Instagram for um, other writers, which is very kind of her and generous. Um, the prompt was, even the donuts failed to de-escalate the situation. And my very good friend and amazingly talented actress, Rachel, is going to be reading this week. I hope you enjoy and thanks for tuning in and we'll see you again next week. Bye-bye. Jackie was a pretty scary woman. I started to say lady then and then I corrected myself. Woman. I don't reckon anyone had called her lady for years, excluding show announcers who generically say ladies and gentlemen. And that means nothing, because I can tell you half the blokes in that audience aren't gentlemen. No, you wouldn't use lady or any other light terminology in regard to Jackie. She was scary. She was grumpy. She was angry. Hold on. Four more and we've got a remake of Snow White and the Seven Less Likeable Dwarves here. Granted, she had a lot of stuff going on at home, of which I knew all about because she never stopped talking. And she had been in the job 25 years. But it didn't make it any easier when you had to die for cover if something in the office went mildly wrong. There was the time that Paul from Accounts had accidentally eaten her salad from the fridge in the kitchen. Before you knew it, there were thief signs printed on every available surface. Pinboard, filing cabinets, water machine and she started spot-checking people for red onion breath to try to catch them out. She asked the office manager to install internal CCTV. Luckily, Paul escaped unscathed. She'd have done more than crunch his numbers if she ever found out it was him. Then there was the occasion when she'd had two days off sick, and there was a last-minute office move to accommodate two new hires that had been left off the floor plan. She came in on the Monday and she had lost her window seat at the back of the office and had been put on the aisle near the toilets. Not only that, it was next to Richard Gargle Potten, who was carrying a small paddling pool's worth of spittle in his throat. Not only did she have to keep shouting, swallow, every time he spoke, she was unable to get away with doing bugger all. Her previous desk position had meant that nobody could get behind her to check her screen. There was so much stomping and slamming. I think building control were worried the ceiling was going to cave in, so she was moved back before the end of the day. Unfortunately for me, today I had been given the promotion that Jackie not only thought she deserved, but that she thought was a given. She absolutely, 100%, didn't think it was in question that it was hers. The head of supply had left unexpectedly six months ago. It's rumoured that she was having an affair with the CEO of our main rival and leaking information. So she quietly left under a cloud. Either that or they bumped her off. I'm kidding. I saw her the other day actually and she looked about six months pregnant. But I'll let you come to your own conclusions there. I'm not one for gossip. Anyway. So she had been loosely covering the role. However, they decided to merge it with another role, basically pay one salary for two jobs. And I was getting complacent in what I was doing, so they moved me over. Then they asked me to not say anything. That's the worst part. So now it looks like I've been scheming behind Jackie's back. I heard the office door slam from the other side of the large open plan floor. It sent an icy cold chill down my spine. Awful. The thing is, I like her. We're sort of friends. She's absolutely bonkers, and I don't like the way she throws her weight about, but she can be kind when the blue rage hasn't taken over. And she'd do anything for anyone. She might be kicking and screaming all the while she's doing it, but she'll get it done. 
So I feel really bad. Now, we all know what the single most important thing in any office environment is, don't we? Yes, that's right. Cake. More important than pay rises, promotions and having an afternoon nap in the loo with your head on the toilet roll. Cake. And what's better than cake? Free cake that somebody else has provided. And what's the best possible type of cake one can provide for their colleagues? Krispy Kreme donuts. I nervously made my way to the back of the long, long office. The only other time I felt the enormity of how long it was was when I'd walked the length of it with my skirt tucked in my tights. Its vastness underlined by the total number of people that admitted they'd seen my pink polka dotted bottom cheeks exhibited through the fine light cloth. Sort of like a pair of rotten red onions in a mesh sack. But this felt longer. It felt like the green mile. I was saying my prayers along the way. Jackie, I said, I'd really like an opportunity to explain. Nothing. No response. I uh, obviously don't know what exactly has been said, but I saw you coming out of Simon's office, so I'm guessing they've told you about the role? Nada. Niente. Didn't even look up from her screen. I had a faint, cold fear that she was going to blow, and even the doughnuts would fail to de-escalate the situation. Look, I'll leave these here for you. Just to say I'm on your side, and just let me know when you're ready to have a chat. And I leant forward with the tray of deliciousness to lower it onto her desk. With that, she stood from her seat, arms flailing above her head, and shouted, Donuts! The flappy arms and standing movement, which can only be likened to a very enthusiastic and slightly unhinged Mexican wave, catapulted the doughnuts into the air. The next few seconds were slow motion. There, right above my head, like a triple somersault with half twists, was 15 quid's worth of Krispy Kremes. I don't know what made me do it. Maybe embarrassment, fear, survival instinct, but I turned on my heels and ran. This also felt like slow motion. You know, like in a dream when you can seem to get the arms moving but the legs are still asleep? I would guess that I got maybe three paces in and it hit me. No, I don't mean I had a realisation that I should never have taken the job in the first place and should have told them that I owed it to my friend to speak with her first. I mean, the tray of donuts hit me. Right smack bang on the top of my head. What a dismount. And let me tell you, they are indeed crispy. And you know what else they are? Creamy. I was now wearing 15 quid's worth of crispy creams, although depleted in value somewhat, I imagine. Talk about a sugar crash. I'm going to say that it was worse than the skirt tucked into the tights. The silver lining there was that at least I had tights on. There was no silver lining here. Jackie was upset. There were zero donuts to be had by anyone. And now I had to do this long, long walk of death back up the office. But when I heard Jackie laughing, I turned around and she looked genuinely happy. She was hysterical. She was laughing so much, it seemed like she was losing the use of her legs, almost falling over, face scrunched up, tears of joy rolling down her cheeks. And I started laughing too, probably nervously at first, but then a full-blown belly jiggle chortle. And loads of other people started laughing, once they were genuinely sure it was safe to do so. There were sort of screams and snorts and people pleading, stop, stop, I, I can't take it anymore, followed by more roaring outbursts. It even cleared Richard Cotton's gargle. <laughs> when it eventually died down, Jackie looked at me in all my icing covered glory and she said, it's OK, I get it. I said nothing but smiled. I knew when not to push my luck. I needed that, she said. I think we all did. Well, guys, you're absolutely welcome.
And I did little bows all the way down that long, long aisle to a standing ovation.